Welcome to the Effortless Swimming Podcast. Uh, my guest today is professional triathlete Sam Laidlow. Welcome to the podcast, Sam. Thanks a lot. It's an honor. So um, your first question is first. What are you doing beating guys like Jan Fredino and uh, Sebastian Kinlay in the swim? What's, what's going on at such a young age of 22? Uh, I'm, just, I'm just working hard, to be honest. Uh, yeah, there's no... There's no well working hard and smart. I think yes, not not just working hard. Um, I've been I don't I don't swim a lot compared to a lot of people, and I don't. Lots of people think I come from a swimming background, but I really don't. Um, I came out my first national when I did my first national like junior race. I came out 135th of the water out of like 145 people. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's been a it's been a, a slow but sure sure progression and. Yeah, I'm lucky to have a father who comes from a swimming background and his father, so my grandfather also comes from a swimming background. So I guess it does kind of run in the blood, but equally, um, no, I don't, I'm not I'm not a swimmer. I've always been been a triathlete and that's what we've also looked at is the, the specificity of, of our event, if you know what I mean, because it's very different to swimming a flat out 200 in the pool. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's funny. My um, my dad and my granddad were also swim coaches as well. Oh, cool. And um yeah, just what a um, what a funny world it is. And um, so your dad coaches you across all three disciplines, is it? Yeah, he does. Yeah, um, he was never he never forced me into into triathlon or even coaching me. So um, I often went I often went with whatever the school coach was or the, the facility I was in. And then it was only two and a half three years ago that I came back um, and asked my dad to coach me basically. Um, and it was from that point on that my swimming really got stronger um yeah so i used i used to swim like many of the short course athletes do kind of almost every day let's say five to six times a week around four and four to five k every swim session um and it didn't well it's only now in hindsight but that didn't work super well for me um and since i moved back with my dad um it was kind of a blessing in disguise really but the pool was actually like a 45 minute drive away so we would only go three times a week, but when we'd go, we'd make sure we did a proper swim, if you know what I mean. So there was kind of two years where we just swim three times a week, but it was three times 6K. And, um, and that's where I really saw my progression. Um, and yeah, it, I, I think lots of people, especially triathletes, the problem is that when you get in the pool every day um, and then you're on top of that swimming, and, sorry, you're on top of that, you're biking and running, then you don't, you never really, get in the water fresh and I think for me swimming is so technical that I don't really see the point of swimming if you're even remotely tired if you know what I mean um so that's why making to just doing three sessions but making sure I went into them uh fresh was worked a lot better for me what about um now how often are you getting in the pool yes yeah, same so three now during the summer I swim three times in a pool um and once in the lake uh but the, the volume reduces a bit in the summer uh, just because uh, we have I have less swim times. And also I try to focus a bit more on, on the bike and running. Um, but yeah, g- generally I, I, t- I tend to, well, one of, the, one of the benefits of swimming is obviously, it's obviously lower impact. And so you can do a really hard strength session, you know, without it having a big effect on your body, which you have to be more careful for a, for a triathlete if, you, if you're doing that on the, on the bike and run. Um, but one of the one of the things my dad's always always been really careful with from a young age is even if I didn't swim a lot, he would always um, pick up on on technical aspects, if you know what I mean, um, and really really focus on that. Even if I was swimming once a week, we'd rather me swim once a week well than than swimming three or four times a week with a terrible stroke. If you know what I mean, and that's really where where I, I felt my progression came along because as soon as I started swimming more, I obviously got a lot faster. Um, but I, I certainly think that's, that's an important point for the for, for parents or to, to take into account is is yeah some it's, sometimes it's best for for a kid to to swim two or three times a week and be a healthy kid uh, who enjoys swimming you know um, and he's still got a massive room for improvement rather than um, sticking them in the pool yeah six seven eight times a week which I'm sure which I know happens already at a very young age in certain certain places yeah absolutely like it's i I see it a lot too like uh, quite often those junior swimmers who are champions for their in their age group at 12 13 14 if they've been pushed to to get there 
um, they often don't continue on. And I think success yeah. in swimming is a big part is about how much you enjoy it and whether or not you want to, or you continue to do it as an, as an adult and as you, as you get older. Um, so I think that's yeah. hugely important. And the technical side of it too, like with your, with your dad, like what, um, and it's obviously made a big difference. I've seen some videos of your swimming. I'm going to put some stuff on YouTube um, to sort of show people how you're swimming, which is, looks, looks great. Like what, um, and that obviously pays off too with the results that you're getting in the, in the swim. So how did your dad help you work on those technical things? Um, we're, we're big believers in doing a lot of, a lot of strength work and just, and then your kind of body naturally becomes more efficient. Um, we don't, we don't necessarily, uh, focus even with our athletes, um, that we coach because my dad coaches other athletes and I coach a few athletes also. Um, sometimes you do just have to kind of, uh, swim until your arms fall off and then let that adaptation period. I mean, lots of, lots of age group and stuff kind of look for short court, uh, shortcuts, I find. And they think that sometimes just by magically, I don't know, dropping their shoulder a little bit or doing, or I don't know, twisting their hand this way or that way will make, will make them swim five seconds, a hundred faster, which unfortunately is not the case, if you know what I mean. So technique is important, but um, I, I do also kind of feel it comes naturally and um, you can relate that to, to running. You see some, you see people running with all sorts of different strokes, uh, sorry, all sorts of different um, forms. And so when you, when you, if you just tell, if you just get somebody to run every day a little bit more, if you know what I mean, eventually they do become very fast. And so every bit, we're all different physiologically. So uh, there's no one way of swimming, if you know what I mean. There's no point trying to copy Sun Yang if you, if you, if you're not Sun Yang, if you know what I mean. So yeah, it's, um, I, I wouldn't, what we really focus on, especially for open water, um, and this is why strength is important, is just, um, just having the strength to kind of keep the momentum of your arms turning, if you know what I mean, because when the water's choppy or whatnot, there is, there's, there isn't, you can't, there's whether, what, what you see in a pool where they have a nice glide and that it suddenly becomes less, less important because if you do, if you do have a, like a dead point in your, in your stroke, then suddenly that the choppy water or whatever will, or then, then mini waves will kind of push you back, if you know what I mean. So although it's not aesthetically super pleasing to watch, um, just kind of having that strength to be able to turn your arms around, and especially lots of our swims are with a wetsuit, and that also adds another another restriction, if you know what I mean. So one of the things we do a lot of is um, swimming with stones. <laughs> so And that I've found that's a really good drill. Uh, so we hold... Well, I I don't have stones anymore. My dad actually for Christmas he he made me some lead pellets. That was my <laughs> my Christmas present um, because the what we wanted was as much weight as possible for a little grip, um, and it's it's actually a really good tool for loads of reasons. Um, one, you feel like like if your core is not engaged, you just feel like you're going to drown. Um, two, you obviously you've got less um, less catch, so your cadence naturally has to be higher, uh, which is good for open water. And three, the kind of the the pullback phase is obviously harder because you've got a weight in your hand which kind of simulates the muscles you'd use in a wetsuit so uh yeah we found that's a, to be a really good tool and um yeah this is the first time i'm saying it but it's, it's a it's a laid low secret that <laughs> i um saw i was one of the videos i think it was with your dad um you just talking about some of the uh, the things that you um you focus on with the swimming and um i was gonna i was gonna bring up um stones and i've heard um a friend of mine, Amy Jones, who's a, a swim coach. Um, she makes the Amy yeah. buoy, um, which you might have seen that the, the pool, um, the pool boys that a lot of triathletes will um, will use. She's um, she's talked about swimming with shells. So with these, I can't remember the name of the type of shells, but basically like similar concept, but they'll empty yeah. when you go across over the top of the water. Um, so it sort of speeds up that recovery, and then they'll fill up as okay. you come through. So very similar yeah. concept, and um, she's a, she's a big fan of those as well. And um, so you're talking yeah. about strength work, um, swimming with the stones, you're talking pool boy and paddles as well. What sort of stuff are you doing for strength development? Um, yeah, I think uh, pool boy, pool, pool boy is, is a good tool for, for triathletes and especially pro triathletes, I guess, because as I said, often, often we already go into the water with some fatigue, if you know what I mean. Um, and especially, especially like, so you know that you're going to go into a race generally fresh. So 
sometimes sometimes you know with a pool it's just easier to hit them times if you know what I mean and your heart rate's obviously a bit lower because you're, because you're not kicking um, but then equally I do find lots of age groupers stick a pool boy in far too much if you know what I mean because they can swim fine with a pool boy so and they just find it much easier um, so it's certainly a balance and then other, other strength uh, or I find certainly doing a lot of IM uh, is really good uh, butterfly I mean is especially for that for exactly what I was saying before not having a dead point in your strength if you know what I mean with butterfly you really just have to turn your arms around uh, and it, it does when you see the best guys it does look like they're kind of gliding through the water like a dolphin but if you do look at it properly there isn't really any moment where they're not uh, kind of either moving forward or catching the water the, they don't just stay at the front for ages if you know what I mean as soon as they've got the power to be able to just turn their arms around um, so yeah we do that then um, then it's just yeah just session I mean I always say it, but my like five five k with my dad feels like eight k with any other uh, swimmer, and we do, so we don't do we don't do a, we don't do a lot of intensity necessarily. Um, but but I'm, I'm I don't do a lot of intensity full stop. I mean, Ironman is, is like almost one hundred percent aerobic effort. If you know what I mean? So there's I, there isn't much point in them. Um, and yeah, I mean nobody's swimming faster than whatever one ten pace on on um, on Ironman. So if you can already do fifty meters in in 30 seconds which many people can for instance or even 35 which is 110 then you know that you've already got that that speed all you need to do is have the endurance and the strength to keep it up if you know what i mean so mm. uh, it's not really about swimming fast it's just about having the strength to to keep keep that pace going and especially as i said before like with the with the wetsuit it, it's, it does bring an extra resistance um but yeah so mainly, mainly i am uh and then and then just yeah i don't know just long hard sets if you know what i mean not not sets of loads of rest we don't things that are just boring you know i mean swimming yeah i mean well triathlon and an endurance sport in general is is re relatively boring <laughs> um, and sometimes you just have to accept to do whatever it is i don't know five times 800 or you know just yeah long long sets that hurt your arms yeah and what have you got a couple of go-to sets that you that you'll do on a pretty regular basis um, so we had leading into the start of the season this winter when we got a bit of a routine, we had two, two sessions that we'd do. Uh, one was just a straight 3.8 K swim, which, which the first time I did, well, I mean, I do a short warm up and then I just do kind of a, a straight 3.8 tempo swim, um, 3.8, because that's the, the Ironman uh, swim distance and just kind of, that's, that's what we decided to do. Um, and the first time I did it, I was just like, bloody hell I didn't I didn't realize how hard it was if you know what I mean to just swim continuously like that because you know in, in an Ironman you often neglect to swim because like you're like oh it's only we only spend 45 minutes in the water and then we've got five hours of cycling and less than three hours on the run if you know what I mean or four hours and three hours whatever um so you often forget about the swim and it was when I did this for the first time um this winter and I was like bloody hell it really is hard like and so, so then we did it what I was like right I want to do this every week so until it becomes easy and uh, so, yeah, I generally do that at about 115, kind of 115 per, per 100 pace in, in, a, in a big pool, uh, in a 50 metre. And then uh, and then the second the second key session is 40, 100s going on like a sh very short rest and depending on, depending on where I'm at with my fitness levels, um, yeah, I can, I know that before, before Gran Canaria, where I came out in front of Yarn of the Water, I, I knew I was in a good place because I did 4100s going on 115. So, yeah. Mm. Long course? Uh, no, that was short course, actually. Yeah, yeah. still pretty tidy, but, though, for 4100s. No, it is. Yeah, I was, I was, I was happy with that, um, especially, like, I mean, a swimmer like me doesn't get much benefit from short course or long course, and it's because my turns and my push-offs are, are terrible. But that, that is also something that is... Also, Though, although yeah, lots of traffic area, yeah, but the turns aren't, aren't important. It is, it's still important. I mean, the, especially the push off is is very good to teach your body to be streamlined in the in the first place. If you know what I mean, and if you start every every length with a bad position, then you're not going to swim very streamlined. If you know what I mean, so I do I do I'm still a, a big believer in yeah making making them turns important. Yeah, and I, I get asked that a lot too. It's like, do I should I learn how to tumble turn or flip turn or, I, or can I just keep touching and turning around but it's like well yeah. you're going to be doing this for probably the next couple of years at least and yeah. you may as well just learn to do it and it might take you a couple of sessions but you'll figure it out 
And then your body will get used to that feeling of being streamlined off the wall. And the more you can sort of familiarize yourself with that faster position, that faster feeling, yeah. you know, everything starts to move that way. So while it's not important, it also is in, in, in some ways. So I think, yeah, um, certainly. yeah, it's, um, it, it's worth, worth learning because it seems like a hard thing to do off the bat, but if you just get perhaps a little bit of coaching with it, you get you know, the right advice, you can pick it up very quickly um, with the turn. Yeah. A lot, lots of people, especially people who come into swimming late and stuff, they just, their body's never even been in that position, if you know what I mean. And the amount of times I've seen my dad, like what, holding, he, he generally like picks them up in the water, you know, and just like holds them like that. So they kind of realize <laughs> kind of how streamlined they need to be. Yeah. And, and then they're like, oh yeah. And then, it, yeah. So there's, so, but I think mobility as well is, um, is something that people overlook, uh, and even I probably overlook and should do more of it. And but when you see when you see some people's mobility, if you know what I mean, uh, no one, there's no wonder if you know what I mean they can't they can't bring their bring their shoulder back nice and their elbow high, if you know what I mean. They can't. Um, so I often tell my athletes just to like at least once a day just get a towel, you know, and like with your straight arms push it, like bring it over and back over and try and get that the, the grip on your towel a little bit um, narrow every every day, if you know what I mean. And it takes like a minute of your day. Yeah, I'm a big believer in just um, doing at least a little bit of that stuff um, on a regular basis because it's just it's yeah. just like that sort of movement atrophies. You just lose it if you don't if you don't use it. And I found that when I wasn't swimming for a couple of couple of months last year, um, I was getting so stiff because I'd swum since I was yeah. I was a kid. Like I would never miss yeah. like I would never miss a, a week in the pool. And then as of you know, last year, we couldn't swim for a few months. And I just like, I did not have that range of motion um, that I ha had had forever. Yeah. And um, so if you don't use it, you, you certainly lose it. And um, I'm a big fan of like the, um, like those hard rubber massage balls that um, yeah. in like, if you're watching TV at night, just roll it out through like your, yeah, between the shoulder yeah, blades and a couple of areas. Yeah. So good. And um, even just some basic stuff on the foam roller can help a lot too. Um, and stuff with the towel. It's um, because if you can't, if you can't get your arms up like here, good luck trying to get them over comfortably in your recovery um, or yeah, get some yeah. sort of catch. How do you, how do you find that you feel through the shoulders and with your range, spending so much time on the bike and, and running? Mm. Does it, you feel that impact? Yeah, certainly. Um, the whole kind of just flexibility in general is, is a bit of a chicken egg situation in, in triathlon because Mm. For swimming and cycling, you have to be very flexible. Uh, but running, I've found that so I, I even spent like two years doing yoga and stuff, and I kind of felt I, I felt a bit loose, like when I was running, kind of which is not what you want in for running. You want to be quite springy, and if often the best runners in the world, I mean, they have like really short tendons, and they're just like they're just like a, a spring, you know. Where for, for swimming and cycling, it's the opposite. And um, I do I do remember particularly on my on my old bike where I used to have quite an extreme position on the um and it used to really affect my swimming if you know what i mean if we've just if i've just spent 150k or whatever in a in a really like severe trying trial position uh and then you go swimming the next day or whatever and you just yeah it's just you can't you can't move your arms how, how they should um and now i mean that's one of the other i i'm one of the guys who has probably the least what we call aero position in in, in triathlon but I'm just comfortable, you know, and uh, and it's it, one. It's good. I, I I prefer it for for racing, but equally in training, it means that I can I can swim. If you know what I mean, without it having. Oh, sorry, I can bike without it having too much impact on my on my swimming. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. And um, and so going um going forwards, yeah. What have you? What are your? What are your main goals going forwards? Um, you've got the, and also what, like, what are those main things that you're, you're focused on? Cause obviously the swims, um, a real strength. How about the bike and the run and, and, and what does the next couple of years hopefully pan out for you? Yeah. I mean, uh, I've always, I've always wanted to keep my, my swimming up, even though in certain races, it doesn't necessarily have a big impact. Uh, but because my main goal is in the long term is like championship events. So let's say Hawaii or, or like world world i'm a world long distance triathlon championships um as soon as you get to a, like a championship level then there's obviously lots of other good swimmers uh and that's when it's important uh in our sport to to be a good swimmer but you get out in the, in the first pack uh, although it's not drafting you still get a dynamic of the race with, with other guys and you do get still get an effect at 12 meters uh, which is a draft legal zone um so yeah going forward i mean 
this year certainly I would uh, I've, I'm just trying to be a bit more consistent in my racing uh, I used to be very very good at peaking for one race um, and then having then having a massive low if you know what I mean but as a, as a professional or wannabe professional or young professional even call, call me um, it's difficult financially to do that if you know what I mean especially like last year when I prepare for one big money event race and then it got cancelled then it's then it goes down the drain if you know what I mean so um, this year I'm not, I haven't yet reached like peak fitness. I'm just trying to stay a bit underneath that and just trying to trying to be more consistent over over the season, and just enjoy racing. So, so the next goal is is Ironman Bolton, uh, where I'll try and qualify hopefully for for Kona. Um, and if I do qualify for Kona, I should imagine I'll probably be the probably be the youngest pro there, um, which would be great. And if I don't qualify, then I'll likely do a, a flat a flat Ironman to try and be the youngest person to go under eight hours. That would be that's my goal for, for this year. Yeah. But um, certainly swimming, I'm at, I'm, at, I'm at a phase where luckily I don't, I don't have to go to the pool like every morning, um, which I know that some, some athletes do. Uh, and I've seen, and, and I've seen this and actually got, I actually got asked this in a, a recent PTO interview after my race. Was, I got said, what tips could you give like the bad swimmers? Like um, say, say you did said Sam Long and Sanders and stuff. And um and so, and in my eyes, they swim too much. They or they go into the water too much. If you know what I mean, four triathletes anyway. Um, and they talk about this getting the feel for the water. But the problem is, there I get the feeling their swim sessions, their swim sessions, are either one thing or the other. It's never, it's never too hard to have an adaptation off it and recover. Uh, and yet, it's never too easy. And that's what I used to do before. Um, yes, and they, yeah, they they talk about having this feel for the water and being not fighting the water but i'm not I'm, I'm not a big believer in that to be honest it comes a point where you just have to swim to the extent where your arms drop off and then recover and then do that again <laughs> um mm. uh so yeah that's that's the one tip i would i would give them or anybody else to be honest yeah that's um that's interesting and um uh so if you what's what have you how close are you to that eight hours what's your best your best time so far? um when I was 20, so before COVID, two years ago, I did 8.05 um, in Barcelona. Um, but to be honest, the race, I, I wanted to do it when I was 20, uh, but I'd had lots of problems. I'd, I had a broken rib during the summer and it affected training quite a lot. And I, I really I really had to rush kind of my fitness right at the end. And, and also I was, I was doing stupid things like trying out low carb diet and yeah, just anyway um and it honestly i did 805 but i felt like i was running on like on one cylinder if you know what i mean so i, I knew i knew i had it in me and even now now all i need is just a flat course and i know i've got it in me it's just it's just it's not necessarily a, a priority if you know what i mean what war one with covid there hasn't been that many flat courses and uh uh yeah so if if the opportunity comes then, then it comes but i still think i'm not sure what the youngest person is to i think he's like 24 so i should be I should I should be able to do this year hopefully. And uh, I read um, I was reading on your, your site as well that like this was um, triathlon was a like something that you really aspired to as a kid. You, yeah. I, I, there's not a whole lot of people where they're as a young kid they're seeing triathlon like on TV and that sort of thing and going that's what I want to do. I've certainly heard a, a couple, but it's it's not as much as you get like with the Australian rules football here or soccer or yeah. you know, football over um, in the UK or France. Like it's, it's quite a unique one. So where did that sort of you know, come from? Um, so my parents came out to move that to France. We were British originally moved that to France to set up a triathlon training camp business. Uh, and so I just, I just grown up with seeing triathletes at home and everything. And from a very, 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 very early age, I'd, I'd been watching Kona or whatnot on TV and, staying up late at night it's obviously not in our time zone and i was just like right i want to be i want to be that guy if you know what i mean so uh from a very early age i wanted to to win kona and that's always been my dream and lucky enough luckily enough i've had like really supportive parents who, who also believed in that dream um I actually i i left i left home to go to like a triathlon training school or sorry like a more yeah like a sports school where i could do triathlon and so i left home quite early at 13 and I went, started going down the short course route just because opportunities, uh, opportunities came about. Uh, and in the short course, short course triathlon, there's some, some really amazing swimmers, uh, especially in, I was in, I was in, I was on the French Grand Prix series. And in my, in my team, we literally had like five guys who, 
who were all like around four minute, 400 meter swimmers, if you know what I mean. So they were certainly very rapid. Um, and, uh, and that kind of opened my eyes to, so that's why it was good to go through the short course because often in Ironman it's, it's neglected, but um, I think it's coming to a point where the swimming is becoming more important, even though it's in percentage terms, it's like about 10% of the race, if not less, um, you can still lose that race and then the 10% and the uh, last, last time Kona went about uh, 2019, it was the first time I'd seen anyway that like the lead swim pack actually stayed away right to the end, if you know what I mean. And so mm. that was good to see and hopefully it will, it will motivate a few more people to, to swim well. Because that's, that's all you need really is just two or three or four guys to, to really uh, like accept that they're going to swim hard, if you know what I mean, and make the race hard. Um, but it's, it's difficult because certain races, it, uh, like the race I did last weekend, I did the, the national championships. It was, there was, there wasn't much point in being a good swimmer because I, I, I mean, I came out with a minute lead. Uh, I was on my own and then, and then you're on your own, if you know what I mean? And there's a pack of mm. 10 guys behind, a minute behind. So the chances of them catching you up are, are very likely. So, but then I know, I equally know that when it's a championship race, they won't have that. They won't have that, uh, that, that opportunity. Yeah, it's exactly right. They've, um, in, yeah, in some races, it's like you, you can have that minute minute lead, um, but it's like, oh, I'm going to probably get caught anyway. Um, but then when the time comes, you know, when you've got perhaps another two or three swimmers who are at that similar speed and you make that pack, um, yeah. yeah, it's going to be a different story. But yeah, my, my dream my dream race would certainly be like to create an event that was like a three-hour swim, a three-hour bike and a three-hour run. That would be, <laughs> that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure financially it would uh, it would like be great because not many age groups like. I mean, swimming's often their weakness. So you're not going to get them swimming uh, 12 or 15 k. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the start of a start of a, I think 3.8 will um will be enough for most people. Yeah. Well, um, Sam, how um in terms of uh, either getting in contact with you or finding you, um, where's the best place to um to do that? um so my name is just sam laidlow on most of my insta like instagram and facebook and all that uh my website's equally sam laidlow and then uh yeah my my parents track from training camp business is called sanctuary sportif uh and yeah i truly i truly believe that yeah well, my dad's my dad's one of the best swim coaches uh i mean in the world and i've seen him not not just not just the like top end but he he's He's, he's gotten people through who couldn't swim like 25 meters to easily do an Ironman, if you know what I mean? So yeah, as he said, and he's been, he's been in the business for so long. Uh, he was, he used to swim for Great Britain and then, yeah, he just, he stopped. He, he moved into triathlon because uh, he like missed the Commonwealth by Commonwealth Games by some stupid amount. Uh, like I can't remember if it was a, a tenth or whatever it was of a second. And so it kind of, he was just a bit like, oh, well, all this effort to, to not go, if you know what I mean? So and at that period, triathlon triathlon came along, and uh, yeah, he jumped into that, and yeah, it wasn't a, it wasn't a bad decision. Yeah, fantastic. Well, uh, thanks for being a guest on the podcast, Sam, and uh, all the best for what's to come. I know you're recovering at the moment from a, a full distance two weeks ago, or a week and a half ago, and a uh, half yeah. distance um, the following week. So um, yeah, I'm sure anything else will feel easy after that. <laughs> yeah, let's hope. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, mate. All the best. All right, cheers, Brandon.